Folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. This is Bob Desmond, and it is the 20th of February, 2021. The symbols that we're looking at going into the new trading week, which I went over with members yesterday, are RJR, EXC, XPER, MSFT, short on MSFT, TLT. I'm throwing in another one. I went over this one the other day, and that's going to be Boeing. So it's actually going to be six stocks, five to the long side, one potential to the short side. And before we go into those charts, let's talk about our week last week. We were pretty accurate on our call that yields were going to continue to rise going into last week. What did we do? We built on individual shorts. Our short of Twitter finally is beginning to work. We did not go adding to our short of the indexes, meaning our short of the small caps and or our short of the triple Qs. Soon, we're waiting for a break in the market. While we had a down week on the small caps and the Qs, the transports broke out. So tomorrow night being Sunday night, we're going to go over the opening futures action because I think it's going to be a very volatile week. We have a lot of inflationary data that is bubbling to the surface, yet gold and silver are not responding. Why? I think it's because we have stagnant economic growth. But longer term, after we see that growth is not what the government says it is, you're going to see stagflation, meaning stagnant growth, rising inflation, and we're going to want to add to our gold, silver trades. So more on that in the coming days and weeks. Right now, it's just time to sit, watch, and wait. I've done videos on gold. My expectations are 2021. It's on YouTube, and I still stand by that commentary. I may need to amend it because of the volatility I see coming, but longer term, you got to be in gold. You got to be in silver. They're going to kill the dollar. They're going to try to, they being the government, they want to inflate away our debt, which we're never, ever going to be able to pay, pay off. We are bankrupt. The United States of America is a bankrupt nation. The last time we saw stagflation was back in the 1970s. Yet at that time, we were a creditor nation. We were lending money to countries. Now we are a net borrower, which we can never get out of. We are a debtor nation. We are a banana republic. So beware of this market. So more to come, gold, silver, so before we begin, let's talk about our sponsor, which is going to be TrendSpider. TrendSpider is our primary software for conducting our analysis. What we use it for is it allows us to automate our grunt work. It speeds up our analysis and it allows us to improve our accuracy along with the benefit of reducing costly mistakes. How do we do that? Well, we use our alerts, or their alerts, I should say. We use their alert system, and it helps identify good, not good, great risk, reward, and treat plays. And if you set your alerts, set them and forget them, as I like to say, you'll avoid impulse buying. So please, time your trades with precision by using the trade alerts. If you're worried about this is too complex to me, don't, don't worry about it. Just go to... Trend Spider University, I know Dan, I know Jake, they're the owners, management, these guys live and breathe this product, and they have a ton, a ton, especially check out Anchored VWAP, I'm going to be spending more time myself on this, they're big on it, a lot of tutorials here folks, so Trend Spider, 35% discount code below, and I give it away free to members and on that note i got a note from a couple of people now trying to sign up to sign up for our 14 day free trial offer let me log out here don't use this button here the join now button use this one over here that's active and i give trend spider away with silver and gold level memberships right down here so you can also use the link below in the video description area sign up 14 days free members i just updated the holdings page and that's all caught up now okay so we're good to go all right let's get to it let's do this let's talk a bit 
first about TLT. This is the 20 year bond ETF. Now, the way you got to think about this trade is that this is a monthly chart is that I am anticipating a stock market break. So the question that becomes, okay, why do you like this trade then? The reason is, is that money needs to go somewhere. So that if we are seeing money leave the stock market, where's it going to go? It's going to go into the dollar, foreign currencies, potentially gold, not right away, silver, potentially, but not right away, but longer term treasury debt, 20 year minimum, 30 year, that's maximum. So we like the TLT, which is a 20 year bond ETF. I like it but not where we closed out. I think we're going to head down lower. I have this support level identified here. I'm going to move this a little bit lower. There we go. Okay, so let's just call it 142. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to use the monthly chart to set my alert. Let's go to a weekly chart. I have one alert already set. That's like a tripwire alert. Let's set up another one at my ideal entry point. And that's at that 142 mark. I'm going to leave a bit of sensitivity on here. So we don't have to be spot dead on. It could be 142.10. It doesn't have to be dead on accurate. And we're going to keep this active for about 10 days. So I want to know if we touch, bounce, and in fact, do we break that support level at around 142? Because if we see a pullback in bonds, there's going to be an effect in the stock market, particularly... Uh, technology, particularly small caps, because rising interest rates, remember, TLT goes down, interest rates go higher. Technology stocks, small caps do not like that. So if we gap down, that means there's going to be pressure on technology stocks, small caps, and you're going to see money move into the TLT. So that's the strategy. I don't plan on having this as an investment, but if we begin to see the markets break, I'm going to lean into the short side on the market. I'm going to buy up the TLT to park some cash. And then as we go into free fall on this market and VIX spikes up higher, then when there's blood in the streets and everybody's getting calls by their brokers to cover their margin debt, not me, I'm going to be buying. So that's what we do here. We're looking for forced liquidation by some that we could take advantage of. So if you're on margin, you're watching this channel, you're smart already for being here. You're watching alternative media. You're not listening to CNBC and you're hoping that they're gonna tell you when to buy, sell. They're not gonna tell you when to sell this market. They're not gonna tell you the truth. What they're gonna do is tell you the obvious after the bubble breaks. All right, they're gonna say, wow, look at this. Gee, the market's in free fall. Did you know that there's record high margin debt? Did you know that the small caps on a price to sales basis have never been this expensive? Did you know that call option activity, which is a sign of speculative mania, is at all time record highs, even well beyond the 2000 peak? They'll tell you that after the market breaks. I'm telling you now, get ready, buckle up, subscribe to the channel, please give us a thumbs up, share with a friend if you like them. Let's get prepared. So that's what we're doing right here, right now, is we're prepping. We're prepping for the market correction. What do we think is going to do well if the market breaks? Cash for short term, long term bonds, TLT, 30 year bond debt. Short term only, though. Then when the market begins to bottom out, you're going to see money rotate out, then go into emerging markets. We're not ready to talk about that yet. Emerging markets and high quality blue chips. All speculative stuff is gonna get taken to the woodshed. Beware. So TLT, we have our alert set here. Let's take a look at it on a daily time frame. Note how we broke support. Here's the automated trend lines on TrendSpider. All right, you click a button. Note, there's no trend lines here. And there you go, we broke support. That was your sell signal. Actually, your sell signal was up here when we rallied up to this upper band of resistance within this descending wedge formation. So I don't think we're done going down yet, but we're close. Maybe another 3 to 5% on the TLT. 
Now, the next chart that I like, this is a monthly chart of EYE, National Division Holdings, Inc. Now, some may be looking at this chart saying, wow, Bob, you know, you have a lot of topping action on top of these monthly candlesticks. You worried about that? Yep. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm worried about that. We still have a few trading days left of the month, but this is one gorgeous candlestick here. We have not put in a new monthly high yet, but we certainly do have a support level below at 45.85. Now, at current, we are above resistance, which was resistance in November, the highs of November, at $50.19. Okay, where to from here? Let's drill down to a weekly chart. Now, the weekly chart is both bullish and bearish. It's bearish in the sense that I don't like the volume, right? Volume is declining. You, ideally, you'd have the opposite here. You have rising volume bars. We don't have that. But otherwise, absent that, I like the fact that we held the breakout. We broke out the week of February the 8th. Last week, we pulled back and retested, and we closed just off the highs of the week. Very, very attractive. So I like this. Now, when you drill down, Actually, before I go to the daily chart, I want to bring up the automated trend lines here. The one caveat, I, I view my main role is to point out risk, not point out hot trades. I'll leave that to somebody else. Now, if you're long over this, just keep in mind, before you go getting aggressively long on a new weekly high, if you're momentum trading, beware that you have resistance right up here at around 52.70. So there's no reason to on a new weekly high to get overly aggressive here unless we see volume pick up dramatically to the upside, daily chart. Now, the daily chart is very constructive. I really like Friday's price action. I'm not fond of the volume action, but I'll accept it. What we did here was we broke out on Friday. And if you're looking for a good risk-reward entry point. And I do send out trade alerts to members. When we buy, add, sell, touch, bounce. I'm going to leave very little sensitivity here. Just in case we have a rough open on Monday, if we get a pullback and a retest of support at 51.34, interesting point to open up a position. Okay, so our alert is set. Now, another thing to keep in mind is take note of the fact that we consolidated for several days. And then the market sent us a signal. This is a feature called raindrop charting. And I use this to identify potential changes in direction. Now, for those of you familiar with regular candlestick charting, you've heard of a doji star formation. That's a sign of indecision. It's very similar to what you're seeing here on the raindrop charts. They're a mixture of candlestick charting and volume weighted moving average VWAP and when you get this blue raindrop that's akin to being a doji store formation the however is and this is the value we broke down on Thursday of last week we closed down on the day yet we flashed a blue doji so I wouldn't have gone buying here on that blue doji but it certainly had my head up for a potential reversal and we got it so another tool in your toolbox is the raindrop charting. And this is proprietary to TrendSpider. So EYE looking very good into the new trading week. XPER. This is a, uh, a semi-play. Now take note here of how we broke out above resistance in December. We've been consolidating, and this month, we are very, very close to a closing breakout. 22.21 marks the spot. Take note of, and here's the value of the automated trend lines. Take note of this descending wedge formation, the lower band in blue, upper band in red. Let's take them off. All you need to do when you're analyzing this chart back then is click a button. And there you go. So you would have been told back here in July that we had a breakout. You could have set an alert up here on a breakout. I digress. Okay. So let's go to a 
Oh, before we leave here, take note of RSI looking very, very nice. Trending higher. Weekly chart. Now on a weekly time frame, we're just consolidating here. I'm not seeing a compelling reason right here, right now to go buying, but it's looking very constructive. Daily chart. Now on a daily time frame, what happened on Friday was that we, let's take these automated trend lines off because they can mess things up sometimes. We broke out, okay? Uh, very good setup here, but now let's reintroduce the automated trend lines. And here you have it, right? So we don't want to go buying right here, right now, because we have resistance immediately above. What would be good is if we have, again, a rough start to the week on Monday, and we get a retest of the breakout point. And folks, five minutes after I set this alert, I'm not even going to think about this chart. Why? We need to use the alerts. It's a rules-based approach to our trading. If this, then that. Meaning, if we get a pullback and a retest to support, which I'm setting up for, and it holds, then it's worthy of our time to pay attention to it and potentially open up a trade, assuming that we hold the retest of the breakout point by the end of business on Monday, Tuesday, whenever it gets fired off. So... Uh, we're looking very good here. I'm worried about the overhead supply here. Bit of resistance. I do really like this raindrop chart. We did break out as well. We have a validation of the candlestick charting along with the raindrop charting. So XPER looking very, very good. I think that we're going to get, assuming that yields pull in and technology does not sell off. Technology was down last week, but the semis were still up. Assuming that we hold the... Support levels here, I think that we're going to move up higher. Watch bonds, watch bonds, watch bonds. If you have yields creeping up, you may want to stay very, very small with some of your long trades. Ruger, Strum and Ruger, gun company. I'm, I'm reluctant to talk too much about politics on uh, YouTube. I'm probably going to be setting, I already have it set up, I just don't use it. A, a, a channel on, uh, on uh, BitChute. And I believe that uh, Odyssey is going to have a streaming service as well soon where I'll probably break out shows that talk more about the political aspect of um, the markets. But I'm reluctant to do so here on YouTube. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to post a link down below in the video description area for our Odyssey channel. Excuse me for hitting the microphone. Our Odyssey channel and our BitChute channel. And we're going to have unique commentary for those channels right now they act as mirror channels for what we're posting on youtube so more to come on that in the future but strum and ruger i'll leave the politics behind but you could use your imagination the second amendment is under threat and strum and ruger was rallying into august then it sold off i'm rather surprised surprised it didn't rally on the election news, maybe there was a fear there's going to be an outright ban on guns. I don't know. Uh, but it looks as though they're working through those fears because last, or so far, I should say, there's a monthly chart. So thus far in the month, we are holding a breakout above a volume shelf right here at around, let's call it $70 per share to simplify it. Weekly chart. And you can see last week on the weekly chart, we broke out. Very, very nice. This is very powerful. What I want to do here is I want to create an alert. I want to know if and when we pull back and do a retest. And there you have it. Set it and forget it. Daily chart. Now, I pointed this out earlier, and I'm going to point it out again because it's an invaluable tool. And that's the raindrop charting. Take note of this price action on the 17th of February. It was weak several days prior. It was weak on the 17th. The however is, we flashed a blue joji. What happened thereafter? We started to move up higher, and in fact, we broke out. Beware the blue doji star, folks. It's very powerful. Excuse me. I keep doing that. Beware the blue raindrop chart, okay? Uh, sorry, Jake and Dan over at Transpider for bastardizing at your invaluable product. So what I want to do here is I want to set up an alert right here at the top of this volume shelf at 72 bucks a share. And I want to know if we break out. No sensitivity. All I care about is if we close above it. 
because that means it's going to be game on for RJR. All right, so we're good to go here. So we have one alert set on a retest of support. Doesn't have to be exactly on the button of where support was in the neighborhood at around $70 per share. Then we want to add more on a breakout above $72 per share. So it's an if this, then that. If we pull back, we open. If we break out, we add more. If we fail to hold this support level, we bail. Simple as that. That's why you need to use your trade alerts. Last chart up is going to be, we're going to go over two more, Microsoft and Boeing. Let's go with Boeing first because it's a long trade. I want to short Microsoft. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, on Thursday night Stock Charts Live, which we do on YouTube, I was asked to go over the chart of Boeing. And I pointed out that on this monthly chart, we have a cup with downward sloping handle forming. We broke out on Friday. We have resistance at 223.83. Take note of your RSI, which is rising. Now, why is Boeing rising in the face of rising inflation? It's because the markets are pricing in, especially the transportation sector, economic growth. I don't personally think there's going to be much. But we'll wait until the GDP numbers come out. And, of course, earnings for next quarter, weekly chart. But the market is convinced right now that yields are rising due to economic growth. Why? Because we're printing more money? It doesn't make sense. So the more money you print and the more money you take out of the economy to redistribute to others who are not performing. Now, I'm not talking about those who are in dire need of help. I'm talking about those that want to sit at home, play video games in the mom's basement rather than going and find a job. Those people are a giant sucking sound of innovation out of the economy. So Boeing is poised to rip here. In fact, we are right at the near a volume shelf at 218.61. So we have a couple of alerts already set here. I'll set up another one on a breakout, no sensitivity, and we'll keep this active for about, get your spelling right, Bob, for about two weeks. And we're good to go. We have multiple alerts set up here. We're good to go into the new trading week. The last chart we want to go over is Microsoft. And let's pull back to a uh, monthly chart first. Now, Microsoft on a yearly basis and on a quarterly basis has RSI roughly 94. So it's at nosebleed overbought levels on a yearly and quarterly basis. On a monthly basis, we do have a new monthly high, yet we're fading somewhat. So we are in an ever-tightening ascending wedge or triangle formation. Call it a cupcake. It doesn't matter. It's a consolidation range. Weekly chart. Now, take note of what happened last week. We had broken out the week prior. Last week, breakout point failure. Or it's also known as a bull trap. Either way, very, very bad. It was an outside reversal bar or a bullish or bearish engulfing as well. No bueno. Bad stuff. So what I'm looking for here is a, at a bare minimum, a pullback to this support level at 236 per share. And should we break this support level, I want to know about it. And we're going to keep this active for about 10 days. Now, Microsoft is a mega cap, high quality blue chip name. I am not in any way underestimating the value of this comp company. Uh, but on a technical basis, it's coming under a lot of pressure. It's overbought on a quarterly and yearly time frame. And it's unsustainable. Eventually, it's going to correct. More than likely, what we'll do is we'll use uh, out of the money, put options on this trade. So we're not going to commit a lot of dollars to this. We want to respect the stock, understanding that it can reverse, it can move up considerably higher if, in fact, yields pull back and the market regains its traction. But if yields continue up higher, Microsoft's going to have a rough time of it, just like any other tech name. So this is one we're going to be looking to Add short of, I also want to know, create an alert, if we touch last week's, very little sensitivity, breakout point. Because right now you're going to have a lot of people that don't watch charts. They're seeing Microsoft and they're saying, wow, look at this, a pullback on Microsoft. I, if I did that over the past three or four years, you can't lose money. And they're right. You can't blame them.
All right, so this alert here, we want to open up a position on an apparent failed breakout, meaning we spend one or two days trying to recapture the 242 mark, yet it's unable to do it. And then all of a sudden you start putting in new daily lows. That's pretty much of a failure. And you don't want to get aggressively short. You want to nibble on those put options. And then at such time as when we break this lower support level, which we already have an alert set at, then we want to add more aggressively to the short side because that's truly a validation that our expectation that Microsoft would break support has been validated, right? Daily chart. Take note of the very concerning rounding top here. Look at this, rounding top. And finally, we broke on Friday. Not much to talk about on this chart. I think the weekly chart is the one we really need to watch because we're not trading on a short-term basis. So forget about the daily chart. I'm more concerned about the weekly chart and ultimately getting that break. Let's go back to the weekly chart. Getting that break down below the support level here. So short selling is not for the faint of heart. You need to respect Microsoft. I am not knocking this stock. I have ultimate respect for Microsoft. All right, because if, you, if you're not humble, you're gonna get burned because you're gonna believe your own BS. Don't believe your own BS. Believe the charts. And folks, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, YouTube, join us as we see the opening price action of the futures. There's a link below. You can enter your email address. You will not get spammed. We'll alert you 15 minutes to a half hour prior to going live. I also have a five-part tutorial called Bob's Five Most Powerful Candlestick Formations. It's free. But don't enter your email address on both. Choose one. And if you're a member, don't re-enter it again because you're just going to get more spam. I send out alerts of when we're about to go live to all our email lists. So only enter your name once or else you'll hate me. All right. And I hate spam too. Uh, what else? TrendSpider 35% discount code. And we also give TrendSpider away to our silver and gold level memberships. Please join us. There's a link below. We also have a special $100 for a three-month free trial offer. If you want gold, all the benefits of gold, and you don't want TrendSpider, that's down below. Join us tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Like, follow, share, dislike. I don't care. Be well. Have a profitable trading week.